everyone, Aria Labs here with the blog to watch. Today I'm going to review the Bramont MB Viper. This is a very interesting and uh, at launch it was um, kind of controversial, I guess, uh, Bramont timepiece. But I think that after you see it in the flesh and you hear the story of it, you'll agree that it's pretty cool and that the company did a nice job here. So what is the whole story here? behind this watch. What is going on with the MB and Viper? This is a weird design. They call it a, a test watch. What does all that mean? So I think that we need to go back a little bit to one of the most important points in Bramont's history, which is working with the ejection seat company, also out of England, Martin Baker. And the Martin Baker collection is a very successful uh, line of watches from Bremont, and we've talked about them on a blog to watch a lot. And they went back to Martin Baker and they said, hey, we want to uh, work with you to test our movements. So the first thing that they did with Martin Baker was say, we want to make a watch that can survive being shot out of an ejection seat. And I actually visited Martin Baker and they brought out this watch box and it had a bunch of different watches in there that they were testing. And there was some stuff similar to this. Um, and they eventually got it right. And that's where Bremont's triptych case came in. And since then, they've been actually one of the most popular luxury watch brands making um, watches that are shock resistant. And the technology works. If you can see here, there's these sort of red parts. This is a, a holder. Um, this is part of the, the system which is designed to hold the movement to the case. And it's made out of a, a material kind of similar like rubber and it absorbs shock and they developed the system where the case and the movement are connected by the shock absorbent material, and that is sort of the hallmark of the shock absorbency. So there's a few different elements to it, but that's a big part of it. And now this case, uh, which is 43.5 millimeters wide, is a new triptych case, and it's sort of based upon cockpit instruments and some things that they did when they were testing watches originally, Bremont and Martin Baker, but it's made out of uh, this sort of matte black titanium with an uh, anodized aluminum bezel that's orange here, of course, that's uh, the sort of Martin Baker color there. Um, it comes with both this orange textile strap as well as a black strap if you're not feeling it. But honestly, with a watch like this, why not go full on orange? The movement is part of a new generation of movements from Bremont, something they've been working on for quite a long time now. And they call it the ENG 300 series, and this specific movement is the ENG 352. And that's a movement which uh, is mostly made in, in England. Um, and again, Bremont has been working on, on that for a long time. That's been a big part of their brand. Um, they've sort of um, gotten certain steps accomplished over the years and, and tried to jump the gun a little bit here and there. Uh, but this is the best um, effort yet. And this is, this is an interesting movement. It, it has a 65 hour power reserve, um, silicon escapement, um, and it operates at three and a half hertz. So similar to some of the older Omega coaxial ones, which actually in, the long, in a large part have moved to four hertz as I understand. But that's, I think how they squeeze out some of the higher power reserve, the silicon keeps it accurate. These hands come from the Martin Baker world. These are things you see a lot, these sort of emergency things. These are things that you pull. And so this that's where a lot of that imagery comes from, those hands. And I know it looks a little bit cheesy in some of the pictures, but when you wear this, it, it's actually quite nice. I think what impressed me when seeing this watch for the first time, again, compared to the images, was the lightness of the case, that it felt quite thin. Um, it's a wide watch and it's not actually that thin when you measure it but it wears thin, it feels thin, and like I said, it's not particularly heavy. And the legibility, it does very much feel like a test instrument, like a, a, something that you would find in a, again, a, a working mechanical evaluation department, um, something that would, you'd see in the Martin Baker factory, and I think that it's fun. So it's a sort of an interesting amalgamation of design concepts there. The price for it is, it's not cheap, but it's it's not crazy high in the scheme of watches like this. Uh, the, the case is more than just shock resistant. <clears throat> There's actually a lot of different types of things that it's designed to be resistant to. Temperature, um, certain types of vibrations, other certain types of corrosion, things like that. So you can go to the Bremont website and read a little bit more about what this particular MB Viper case is designed to do. You can see on the dial there it says testing program and that sounds cool like you're part of some secret you know mission or something like that so it's neat it's fun it's not for everyone but it's it's actually a lot better in person than i think some of the early internet hype would have allowed you to believe it's not a limited edition as far as i know um <clears throat> i don't know how long they'll make it 
I mean, look, the aluminum bezel doesn't feel the most high end. I mean, it's an aluminum bezel and that's fine. It's very well made for an aluminum bezel, but I think we know that it's not necessarily going to be the most durable. So I think that Bramont is going to take this and start to, uh, to build upon it. But as a first version, this is very, very cool and it evokes its theme well. It does a good job at that. And it's a great showcase for the ENG 300, sorry, series movement. Price for the Bramont MB Viper is $5,000. $995, and you can see more in a vlog to watch. Thanks.